What's up, everyone? It's Punk Rock Talk, episode 24. Today, my guests are crime time. You're listening to Crime Time, the title track off their new record. It's on our Spotify playlist, Rebellion Noise 2022. If you're not following that playlist yet, you need to do that. You can find it on Spotify by searching for the Havocs page. Once you get there, scroll to the bottom. You'll see it there, Rebellion Noise 2022. We update it every week on Monday. And we always update it in correlation with whoever we're interviewing on this show. Not only are you going to hear tracks by the guest, but some other punk rock picks our favorites. So it's a good way to... Uh, Here's some stuff that maybe you haven't heard before or an old favorite of yours that we decide to add. All right, so if you are uh, new here and uh, you would like to see old episodes of Punk Rock Talk, you can view them on the Havoc's YouTube channel. You need to subscribe to that channel because we're always preparing new content for it. Not just episodes of Punk Rock Talk, which get uploaded every Thursday, so this episode will be uploaded tomorrow. But uh, if you go there and you subscribe to our channel and you click the bell icon, you'll be notified every time we upload new content. Speaking of which, The Havoc just uploaded our new music video for our latest single. It's called Who's to Blame? We uploaded it last night. And if you are following our YouTube channel, you got notified and you got to watch it before we announce it publicly. The uh, response so far has been really awesome. Thank you for all the love. Uh, and also speaking of music videos, Crime Time has a new music video that just got made public right now. You can find it on YouTube. The song is called Freedom Club. We wanted to uh, debut it here on the show but Instagram has this delay thing that's a fucking pain in the ass, so we couldn't do it. Um, but if you go to Crime Time's Instagram page and uh, look at the link in their bio, it'll take you to their YouTube for the new music video, Freedom Club. We're going to be talking about that video during this interview also. This episode of Punk Rock Talk and every episode of Punk Rock Talk is sponsored by Dead and Buried Inc. Are you in a band? Do you need merchandise? They are your source. You can find them here on Instagram at Dead and Buried Inc. That's I N C, not I N K. Or online at their website, deadandburiedinc.com. If you need merchandise, you can go to their website and request a quote. Also, if you're looking for the Havoc merchandise, that's where you're going to find it. If you uh, have not seen a recent episode of Punk Rock Talk, then maybe you missed the news that I have launched a new record label. It's called Rebellion Noise Records. We have officially released this right here. It's a compilation. It features several of the bands that are playing 40 Fest 
next January 2023. There's a list of some of the bands that are going to be on the festival. Do you want a copy of this? Go to our Instagram page and send us a DM and let us know. Along with your address, your physical address, and your email address. We'll see if we can't get you a copy out in the mail. It's free. All the bands are going to be passing them out for free. How fucking cool is that? Uh, you can find us on Instagram at rebellion underscore noise underscore records. Or I'm sure if you just type it out, it'll pop up. If you have questions for myself or Crime Time during this interview, you can submit them by tapping that question mark icon on your device. Please don't put them in the comments section. They'll get lost there. I don't pay attention to the comments. Um, and I can't scroll back. Um, although I do see this question coming through from Bear Vandalay. Who's the guest today? The guest is Crime Time <laughs> from Washington State. Speaking of which, uh, I think it's time to go ahead and get them on here. So I'm going to send them the invitation. Okay, Crime Time, here we go. Let's see if we can get them on here. There they are. Yeah. Hello. What's up, What's up fellas? What's up? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excited to have you guys on the show. Excited to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Um, you guys have a new record out. You haven't wasted any time because uh, you're a fairly new band, right? Yeah. Uh, I'd put us at the what? Two year mark now? Yeah. Two years? It's a fun record too, man, because it's not like a chore to get through it. I think it clocks in at like just under 18 minutes or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah short and sweet. Yeah, man, like short and sweet, you guys punch everyone in the face and whip your dick out and be like, that's it. <laughs> that is the formula. I love it, man. <laughs> um, and you never I want after you punch somebody in the face and whip your dick out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you know what? I uh, I like that you guys are having some fun with the imagery of this band um, because a lot of times I feel like punk bands just kind of maybe take themselves a little too seriously. Um, but you guys have... Uh, made the Hamburglar essentially like your mascot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, you know what? Everybody thinks we're a crime-based band, but the truth is we're a food-based band. <laughs> all all I, the time. You know, straight up, if I, I always tell people this. If you don't have a grocery outlet in your city, we're not stopping for tour. It's not <laughs> requirements, man. So <laughs> There's a laundry list of reasons, but we'll get into that later. Yeah, let's... um. Let's dive into some shit, but first, uh, can you tell everybody what your names are, what you do in the band, where the band is from? Yeah. You first, Mike. My name is Corey, and I am the singer of Crime Time. And I'm Nate. I play drums in Crime Time, and uh, we are from Washington, Southern Washington State. We say we're from Kelso. Some of us live in Vancouver, Washington, which is right. God, I need to go to the gym. I can't breathe while I'm talking. Um, it's right across the bridge from Portland is what I was trying to say before I got winded. Gotcha. Um, so this band formed during the pandemic, correct? Or just before it started? Just before it started, and it formed as uh, me and Brian, the guitar player of Crime Time, uh, were in a previous band, and that band was kind of on its way out. So we decided, we got bored, you know, like things kind of got idle there. And we were like, hey, let's just write a record on our own, or at least like an EP, four songs or whatever. Produce it ourselves, write the content ourselves, both of us will just play the instruments and we'll see what happens just kind of to kill boredom. And, uh, so the first song we wrote was the track that you played the title track. And, uh, I was like, Hey, that's a killer name for the project too, crime time. And so we kind of did that and, uh, we released some YouTube videos like lyric videos. And initially I was singing on them 
and uh, it actually sounded really good, and it seemed like something that we wanted to pursue. So we ended up hitting up the homie Corey. He had moved up, and uh, our friend Aaron, who plays bass, that was in a band called Outlet. We said, "Hey, you want to play bass with us?" And we started to write the record. And, yeah. Oh, and Sam Burglar, we called him up too. We're like, "Hey, you want to be our mascot?" And he agreed. So. You know what? He needs some publicity. He does, right? That fucker Ronald McDonald, he keeps stealing the spotlight. <laughs> Which is odd because the scam burglar and hamburglar is the burglar, so you'd think. You know, yeah. You'd want to put more attention on the burgers at McDonald's than anything else, right? Yeah, I want to put them in my belly. <laughs> <laughs> that and that fucking that purple McNugget grimace. He's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can <be> different. <laughs> Yo, have you guys seen that band, uh, Max Sabbath? Yes, yes. <laughs> Dude, that shit, the first time I saw that, I was laughing hysterically. Like, what a great gimmick for a band. Absolutely. Oh, that's but I like that you guys are using the Hamburglin more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's the perfect, like, running away from the scene look to him, you know? Yeah, totally. Let's put a flip bill on them and give them a knife and a stick of dynamite. And, uh, you know, it's already a really recognizable image. We've all seen that since we were children. So right. He's a good one. He's, he's a good mascot. Absolutely. I think it's smart. Um, also, listening to the tracks, like, uh, it's obvious that you guys are seasoned um, because everything is performed so well. It's a really tight sounding record. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, you talked about, uh, you know, kind of just writing those songs on your own. Um, I'm curious about your approach because some bands like to keep it really old school and, you know, they, they want to do everything, uh, you know, by micing up an amplifier and, and, and whatever. But some bands like to kind of go the digital route and some bands are combining the two what was your approach as far as the writing process or the recording process the recording process um so like for the record or just yeah when we started writing okay um we like to go old school studio like the older school the studio is that we can find of course with the best sound uh, is what we like to do um if we could record off of big mixing boards all the time that would be our gig but unfortunately technology has kind of advanced past that so um, that record in specific was recorded at London Bridge Studios in Seattle, Washington, which, uh, you know, Pearl Jam started there. Alice in Chains did all their stuff there. Macklemore has done shit there. Uh, who else? Dave Matthews. Dave yeah, Matthews. Yeah, the Temple of the Dog was recorded there. Temple of the Dog. Oh, cool. That's why we, like, uh, that's why we went there. It's, it's known for its brick wall. Um, it's got a big block wall. And uh, drums, drums sound really good in there, so that's why we picked it. We wanted to, we wanted to experience it. You know, it's a good time. Yeah. Recording's a, a really fun thing to do, and you can do it either on your computer. Or you can kind of turn it into a hobby and have fun with it. And, uh, we like to, we like to have fun with it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it blows my mind. You know, kind of where technology has gone in the last couple decades. Um, but man, I'd be taking that same opportunity, I think, to record in that studio. Like you mentioned Alice in Chains recording there. That's one of my all time favorite bands, man. And I, I really wish that I could have seen them back in the day when Lane Staley was still fronting the group. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, we got the opportunity through the producer of the record, Oz Osborne. And, uh, he was basically like, I, I want to do a project. I am able to get this studio. Uh, would you guys like like to record your record there with me? And said, yeah, fuck yeah, <laughs> all day long. And yes, <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah, it's kind of sad because some of those you know iconic studios, like you said, like technology is kind of surpassing the old school style with a large mixing board and all that. So some of those studios are are you know closing down and becoming a thing of the past. Yeah. Um, so it's really cool that you guys were able to experience that with this project. It was really neat. It was really neat to, to sit in that much musical history as well. You know, obviously, I, I'm a fan of punk rock music. I like hardcore punk rock. But I also 
pretty much there's at least one thing out of every genre that I will enjoy as long as it's good music. And uh, I like grunge. I'm a Washingtonian now. I'm from California, but sitting in that, that grunge history, you know, like it, it was pretty cool. It, it was kind of an ethereal experience to know that it, Pearl Jam 10 was recorded in the same place. I was recording a fucking punk rock record, you know? And uh, sure. Yeah, I think we took a lot out of that as a band in the studio, you know, it kind of inspired us a little bit. And uh, it was really smooth in there. We, you know, we made some good friends out of the crew and got to hear some cool stories about Dave Matthews and cocaine. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. Sue me later. <laughs> That's like the last guy I would expect to hear a cocaine story about. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I wasn't there. It may not have Right. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of shitty because I feel like the 90s were kind of like the last great era for rock bands. Yeah. You know, it seems like everything that has happened since then has kind of been like this, I don't know, deterioration um, of the genre. Like, you know, we're... As far as pop culture is concerned, like rock and roll is not really a, a part of the conversation anymore. No. Um, and like the the bands that are a part of that conversation are, are still from that era, like, you know, the Foo Fighters. Yeah. Yeah, I, I honestly agree with you there. And I think the 90s was the last great era of music we might ever see. I mean, I, I actually think about it a lot. Um, now, that's just technolo technology. You know, technology has taken over everything. It has made everything so super accessible to everybody that everything has become watered down. You know, yeah. the rock and roll culture. I hate to say it, but even ours in the punk culture. You know, it's a good thing that everything is that accessible. And I appreciate the fact that anybody in the world can pick up some technology and make some music because I love music as an art form. But at the same time, for people who are... Uh, I don't want to say trying to make a living, but you know, it, it's just kind of watered everything down. You know, it is so saturated that yeah. a lot of greatness gets kind of lost in the white noise, if that makes sense. And yeah, I fully agree. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. And I, you know, I talk to people all the time that aren't musicians that ask me questions about like, well, isn't it, you know, easier to reach your audience now that, you know, the internet and streaming and, you know, recording is what it is. And I tell them all the time, no, it's, you know, it's like the ocean. You're in the middle of the goddamn ocean with a whole bunch of other fish. Many fish. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, like you said, just the saturation is unbelievable. Um, but I think the good thing about the punk rock community is that uh, no matter how big it gets, it's still always going to be a relatively small community. Well, it will always live on the underground, you know? Yeah. You know, there might be an above ground, but the real shit's always on the underground. In no matter, yeah, in our genre and other genres, you know, there's always somebody coming up with something new and cool, you know, that in my opinion is the cutting edge of whatever genre that might be. You know, because it's an art form. Yeah. Well, and kind of one of the benefits to the internet is like, you know, with social media, we're able to connect way more than we could in the past. Uh, you know, that like that's a big reason why I wanted to do this show because I was like, there's nothing like this for our scene. Because and there absolutely should be, you know, at, at the very least, just a way for bands to connect because we can. And, you know, if, if there's uh, opportunity for you to connect with a band that's on the opposite coast because this show was able to bridge the gap for you, then that's fucking cool. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what this is all about. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it always has been for me, and I can speak for my friends and my band as well. It's, you know, the community of it, being able to network. You know, you watch the old documentaries that Henry Rollins talk about their old black notebooks, you know, pay phone calling to people <laughs> to get tour dates, you know what I mean? Like, it's still pretty much in essence the same thing, except now we can look at each other's face while we're doing it. 
And uh, yeah. I think that needs to stay alive. People do need to push, push the tools, help the bands. You know what I mean? Put a motherfucker up, feed a motherfucker, give them a shower. You know what I mean? Like it, all of us are so grateful for that when we come through a city and, and are shown hospitality like that, you know, and, and have gigs to play and all of that stuff. So, I mean, it's super important. And, and what you're doing is super fucking rad and, and it is needed and appreciated. You know what I'm saying? Like, thanks, man. I love the shit out of it. <laughs> you know, I love the shit out of doing it. Uh, it, you know, even though the show is typically only an hour, there's still like so much that goes on behind the scenes to get it all coordinated uh, and ends up, you know, being somewhat time consuming. But I just keep telling myself like, the benefit of, of, of all this is that uh, I'm helping to grow this scene in some way to where, if it's not my band's music, another band's music is reaching that kid, you know, that's 13 or 14 or, or whatever, like I was uh, when I discovered this. And it's going to put them down this path of like all these cool bands that are going to influence the rest of their life. Absolutely. And that shit makes it worth it for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, so you guys have a new music video that just went live. Um, the song is called Freedom Club. Yeah. Let's talk about this video, man, because it's cool. The fucking Hamburglar is making a pipe bomb and like <laughs> ready to blow some shit up. And you guys are, you know, playing at a venue and it looks fucking cool. Like what was the process like? Why'd you choose that song? Etc. Uh, shit, I don't know why we picked that song. We just picked that song because we're ready to go. But uh, the process of it really is, comes down to kind of like songwriting, too. You know, if you can't envision shit in your head while you're writing, you know, then it's kind of pointless. So we wrote that song, yeah. and then I just had that idea, you know. The song's about Ted Kaczynski. It's about mailing people a bomb. It's about... Uh, you know, fucking up technology, even though we're talking on this screen. <laughs> <laughs> some of us don't own a TV, some of us do, right? Yeah. But, you know, um, so that's what it was all about. So it's basically kind of like a, a knockoff of that. And then um, I'll let everybody watch the video and see for themselves. But the whole thing is we, it, we thought it would be funny to kill our band. Um, so that's what I do. I mail my own band a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking cool idea man i like it yeah but it was fun it was fun to film uh definitely it was fucking i don't know man i think it was like 20 degrees outside when we were oh shit that shed yeah uh -huh. and, uh, so like all that fog that i'm, I'm blowing <laughs> out that was all real it was cold i had no shoes on i was rolling around on the floor like 30 times to get the shot right you know uh, usually, <laughs> i was bundled up in there and it was freezing. I was. I kept telling him, like, I can't believe you're doing this, man. Your feet are gonna fucking fall off. And he was just like, get the shot, dude. Just get the fucking shot, dude. <laughs> was that How long did it take to film all that? Ah, uh, we did it in a day. But like, I mean, the chicken shit on the floor was real. Yes, real <laughs> chicken shit. It was real chicken. Like <laughs> <laughs> then they're like, when we showed up, and we're like, fuck it, we're filming in here anyway. And then there's like, I know there's a part where if you watch it, where I'm spinning on the floor, I kick the fucking cabinet. <laughs> and fucking broke my tail. I kicked the living shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, feeling. Luckily, I couldn't feel it. It was too cold. But so that that was a fun one. And then we went over to Airbus, um, which is a club in Kelso, Washington. And uh, Dan owns that club. He's a really cool dude. He lets us practice there, play a lot of shows there. Punk rock metal club. Um, Ella's supportive of the community. Very, yeah, very, solid, very, solid fucking people and venue. So they care, you know. Yeah, so we specifically wanted to film in that in that venue um, to make sure that was part of what we're we're doing too. You know what I mean? It's just keeping it keeping it cool for those that keep us cool. Right on. Um, yeah, that song I actually think is kind of like the uh, I think the guitar riff is probably one of the hookiest riffs on the record. Absolutely. I think that's why we chose that song, come to think of it. But yeah, it's the boy can write a riff. Yeah, the, there's a lot of really good riffs on the record because it's obvious that there's 
not just punk rock influence. There, like oh. there's hints of metal and thrash and like great guitar solos and they're all really well performed. Um, and it, it's cool because it keeps the songs interesting. Right. I'm happy to lay back down on that. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. you're welcome. Brian is all about the riff. Uh, a couple of years ago, I tattooed riff hard across his knuckles and he lives up to that tattoo. <laughs> Any anything he sends us is just riffy as shit, you know, and uh, it's awesome, you know, being able to play with somebody who has a knowledge of music like he does, you know, and uh, okay. yeah, he just yelled at me that I'm a poser. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that that is kind of like um, I don't know what the right word is for this, but. You know, there, there's kind of this idea that you don't have to be a very good musician to be in a punk band. Sure. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I guess in some instances that's true. But when there are musicians in the band that you, that you can tell are good musicians, it's so obvious. And, and those bands, I think, really set themselves apart from you know, maybe someone that's just kind of a newer musician only a couple years in or, or whatever. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know, we, we kind of, we talk about this sometimes. And uh, I think that it was okay. I think that it's okay at any level you're at to, to make a band and make a record, right? Right. It was, you know, the whole, it doesn't have to be good. It's punk bullshit was cool for 1977. You know, yeah. a lot of bands worked very hard to push what you know talent and, and skill sounds like in this genre for the last what 40 years so right I, I personally and you can call me an asshole or whoever can don't think that applies anymore like get skilled you know play to the best of your ability the it, fucking it doesn't have to be good it's punk bullshit is a fucking cop out you know what i mean aside from that if you're just starting join that band take that band on a fucking stage take that band on the fucking road because it's only by experience that you get that skill and you know, I don't know. That's hundred percent. Couldn't agree with you more, man. That's fucking awesome. And uh, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that you're a tattoo artist. Yes. You and guys I are set up in a shop right now. Do you own that shop? He does. Believe it or not. Fucking cool, man. <laughs> they gave him a business loan with face tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, if you can't tell, I'm a bit of a uh, tattoo enthusiast myself. <laughs> uh, so I have a lot of love for the culture. Um, let's talk a little bit about that, man. Like, what got you into tattoos? And, like, how long have you been tattooing? And the commitment to tattoo your face, it's a huge commitment, man. Let's talk about that. Oh, man, I totally don't even remember that my face is tattooed until I see it. And <laughs> At times like this, I walk around Walmart and I can't figure out why people are staring at me all awkwardly and then it clicks, you know, like, oh yeah, I look like a fucking clown. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, fuck, how did I get into tattooing? I don't, I was obsessed with it since I was a little kid, man. I remember, uh, I remember learning how I could break my stereo and make a fucking tattoo machine. And so three days later, once I figured out how to finally assemble it, me, me and my friends all came into that bedroom with crappy, crappy tattoos. And then, uh, I just fell in love with it. And I started hanging around shops as I got older. And uh, yeah, went from there, did an apprenticeship. You know what I mean? Finished that, tattooed for years. And it's been ever since. It's just, now it's just what I do. Fucking cool, man. What's the name of your shop? It's uh, 13 Black Tattoo, Camas, Washington. So if anybody is uh, on tour, they can uh, call ahead and make an appointment. And Oh, definitely. You know. we, we tattoo a lot of the, the touring acts that come through. And if we don't tattoo them, then they're usually just hanging out around here anyway. Um, you can't see it, but there's a room literally full of punk rockers that are all getting tattooed also today. Awesome. And, and there's some people watching I can see on here that have been tattooed. So that's pretty very cool. This my mouth. It's a lot of fun. We have guest artists come up from all over, and uh, we try to get we try to get all the musicians, at least the rowdy ones in here. Is everyone that's in Crime Time also a tattoo artist? 
<laughs> nah, just us, dude. <laughs> okay. I mean, everybody could be a tattoo artist. <laughs> That's true. Might not be very good, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys got a fucking awesome tour coming up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. I mean, you guys are going to Europe. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, we are going to the jolly old UK to play the Rebellion Festival, um, and we're doing a little bit of a tour on the way to do that. We're hitting Scotland. Uh, we're doing one date in Scotland. Uh, that tour starts on July twenty seventh, so we're leaving here pretty quick, and then uh, the rest of our dates are in the UK leading up to the Rebellion Fest, which we will be playing Rebellion on Sunday at three thirty p.m. on the introduction stage. If anybody that's watching is going to be over there and wants to check us out. But um, we are uh, humbled and honored to be a part of such a big and legendary festival. And um, just super fucking stoked. Yeah. yeah, congrats, man. It's fucking awesome. Even if you don't want to watch us play, because there's a lot of other good bands, we can hang out. There's a lot to do. Yeah, it's a festival. Yeah. How did that tour come together for you guys? Did you put it together yourselves? Uh, the tour portion of it... Uh, no, we didn't. Actually, uh, our friend Helen from the band Badass helped us because uh, we none of us have ever been out of the country before. So, you know, they have a lot of friends over there and uh, we'll kind of be touring together for certain dates. And uh, she was kind enough and, and willing enough to basically tag along with Badass on that tour. And uh, it's super awesome of her and we appreciate it. Um, if you haven't heard Badass, listen to them. They are, in fact, bad fucking ass. So well, that's that's got to be so exciting, you know. First time leaving the country, uh, and you're doing it to play music. It's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, it's super awesome. It's I, uh, I don't really have words for it. Like it, it's pretty fucking cool because it's been a dream. Specifically, the UK. You know, yeah. first record that I got was Never Mind the Bullock, followed shortly behind by The Day the Country Died, and then you know. Uh, I got farced by Rudin and and I saw all the stuff I started in on in punk rock was English punk rock. And uh, so it's always been a dream since I was a kid to go play punk rock in England. And I get to do that at the ripe young age of 37. And I'm fucking stoked about it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. First time, but probably not the last time. We're hoping not. We might get banned. We don't know. <laughs> so, not well, if you if you go over there and you punch people in the face and then whip your dicks out, you probably are going to get banned. <laughs> Not in that order, though. Right. <laughs> and then punch the face guy. <laughs> that surprise, they're like, oh, dick! And then they get fucking cracked. You know? <laughs> that element of dick surprise. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, invite the audience to submit any questions that they have for myself or Crime Time. You can do that if you're watching by tapping the question mark icon on your device and putting your questions there. Please don't put them in the comments section. Uh, that, those just fly by and I don't see them and I, I'm not gonna scroll back if I miss it. So again, just tap that question mark icon on your screen to submit your questions. There's some that have been sitting in the queue, uh, believe it or not, since the beginning of the interview. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up and see what we got. Yeah. Important question. Um, this first question comes from Manny D three oh three ceasefire. He says, Why is crime time so fucking sick? I gotta get them, but I can't answer right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I keep this appropriate. <laughs> well, uh years and years of substance abuse. Um a lot of weird personal traumas and dramas over the years. And finally, here we have arrived. Sick as fuck. I'm sick as fuck. Um, let's talk a little bit about about your history, then, because it's you know it's obvious that this is not your first band. Oh no. Uh, what bands you know kind of led up to this? How much time do we have? <laughs> just do the, just do the nutshell version. Okay. Well, me and Brian came directly into Crime Time from a band called Born Sick. Um, Aaron came from Outlet, which was a scoff in Elso, Washington. Yeah, I was singing for BDSM uh, from, from Riverside, California. And then uh, 
then moved up here when I got clean and sober. Oh, congrats, man. Well, the first time I tried. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say on that comment, he was talking about um, London Bridge Studios, and he's like, we made a lot of friends, and the only thing I could think is like, you guys did. I just annoyed the fuck out of everyone who got shit face. <laughs> Like, they got a really comfortable couch. I slept on it for, like, three days straight. It was tight. I have a lot of pictures. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, but, yeah, like, they, I was getting sober. I was getting clean. And uh, and they hit me up to move up here. And then when that all happened, it was like, we got this project. Come try out. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm there. And I somehow got the job. So that was cool. <laughs> you know what, man? My hat is off to you. Um, and anyone else that makes that decision in their life. I made the decision three and a half years ago to get sober, uh, and it has completely changed my life. I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to stand up on a soapbox and, and say that everyone should be clean and sober. That's not, that's not what this is. Uh, I'm just saying that for me, it made sense in my life, and it makes if it makes sense for you in your life, congratulations, man. That's fucking really cool. No, exactly. I try to explain that to a lot of people all the time. It's like, I ain't straight edge. I ain't, you know, like, um, I don't think I'm too good or any of that shit, man. But for me, it became very clear. I can't stop once I start. And it became very clear to a lot of my friends and then the health problems and everything else. And it's just something like, Hey man, if you want to party, party, I'll join the shit. I won't join the shit out of you, but I'll sit next to you while you party your ass off. It doesn't bug me at all. You know what I mean? But I just, I don't partake in that. You know what I mean? Anymore. Yeah, I find a rig in the bottom of every beer bottle. <laughs> but, well, I, <laughs> I think, you know, part of the, the culture of the punk rock scene for so long has been about getting shit-faced. And while I understand it, I, I think that uh, hopefully we're becoming self-aware enough at this point to understand that uh, that that's not for everyone and it doesn't have to be for everyone. And that if someone has made the decision to, uh, to remove that from their lifestyle, that their friends and the scene should be supportive of that. Absolutely. Oh, definitely. I mean, we ain't doing nothing but getting held back. You know, people, people like myself personally can't function through the day. You know what I mean? I can't have a beer cause it turns into the next three months turns into the next six months you know you know it's gone so yeah i don't know like uh, I'm, I'm also in recovery myself you know, I, I took five years in may but um i uh when i got sober because of what you just mentioned about how ingrained into the fabric of, of our culture the drinking and the drug use is i thought i was gonna like lose myself i thought i wasn't gonna be able to perform i thought i wasn't gonna be able to write I thought nobody would want to hang out with me. And they probably still don't for different reasons, but not for that reason. Um, and I realized that I actually, instead of losing myself, found myself, you know. And it does sound super preachy, and I don't give a shit. That's my story. But on the same side of shit, if you're going to get fucked up, get as fucked up as you possibly can. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not straight edge either. You know, if you party, party. You know, if you want to stop, there's a solution type of shit, you know. And, um, yeah. I uh, think... I think the most punk rock thing you can be is authentic. Fucking bottom line. Yeah. So if that is what is your truth and you're being honest about it, you're being authentic and fuck what anybody else thinks about it. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Next question comes from Buckshot Goner. U.S. tour soon? Possibly. We have a couple of things in the works that we are not at liberty to speak about. Call us. Or call us. <laughs> We will, we will go on tour with you. Um, we do have, uh, in Portland, we have a festival coming up called Crash Festival. Um, there's a lot of oi on it, but there's some punk. That's October 7th, 8th, and 9th, if you're close. There's a lot of people coming to it. It's evil conduct. It's booze and glory. It's lion's law. There's a lot of cool acts. So we do have that. But as far as tour plans, they're being really hush-hush right now because we, we haven't got through them far enough to start making announcements. Gotcha. We do, however, have a new record that will be coming out soon. Yes. Oh, cool. We have been recording. We've been, we've been keeping that secret, too. But we already got uh, a lot of that coming back. Um, and so we will definitely be planning to tour around that. And that's uh, any ideas on a, a release date for that? 
Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna keep that one just going right at the moment, right now, until after we get back from UK. Right on. Too much stress to pile at one time. <laughs> uh, next question comes from recreational enthusiast. Who gave you degenerates passports? <laughs> the same people that gave the rednecks all them guns. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> fucking that's a good U.S. Fucking government. <laughs> um, this next question comes from our good friend Kurt of Dismantled Records. He says, "What are Crime Time's top musical influences?" Oh fuck! I'm about to get laughed at. Take a seat. Yeah, <laughs> got a minute. Uh, you yeah. go first, dude. From what John? <laughs> Damn it, I like so much of it. I could go anywhere from hip-hop music with, you know, Benny Paws all the way into, if you wanted to do punk rock, most of my influences usually are East Bay punk. Um, you know, Criminals. The Criminals is, is my biggest influencer, but I also love bands like Avail and um, all the way into grunge. You know, a lot of grunge rock, a lot of rock and roll. I love Motley Crue. I love... Uh, you know, there's pretty much one person from every genre. The one I never admit to, but I'll admit to you guys here, is a huge opera fan. Love opera, sing opera in my as a as a hobby, um, and so that's something that most people don't expect coming out of a, a clown. But yeah, good time. Uh, I I honestly like a little bit of everything. Like I mentioned before, um, I I listen to a lot of punk rock. Uh, I listen to a lot of California punk rock. Um, my heart is in UK 82 punk rock, uh, but I also take a lot of influence out of uh, Finnish hardcore, Japanese hardcore. Um, I also, I really love listening to classical music. I like to hear how they put their music together. Um, I love listening to 90s country. That shit makes me laugh and it's a good time to listen to. Um, I knew somebody was gonna laugh. <laughs> I'll go wear my cowboy hat somewhere else. No, um, his pop hole was a bull rider. I'm, I'm really into goth music. Um, I've just now been listening to some dark wave stuff. Uh, I really love Christian death and all that death rock stuff. Um, early AFI stuff really speaks to me. I like that. Um, yeah, but mostly my heart's in UK 82. You know, I love threats. I love the partisans. Uh, I love broken bones. Um, and DB. And yeah. Just pretty much across the board. I don't. I like to not stay influenced by just a certain genre. And in my daily listening, it's all over the place. It just depends on how I'm feeling or what I'm doing. Um, yeah. That's awesome. I say all the time, good music is good music. It doesn't matter what the genre is. Period. Right. Um, next question comes from The Parasitics. What's the favorite show you guys ever played? Mine's, mine's Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor Strange was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Ble bleeding all over Doctor Strange was a highlight of my moment. Yeah. Uh -huh. Corey busted his head open and just bled all over Doctor Strange records. And it was a really cool show. And Bill was really nice to us. And, and we just had a great time. Um, but we, we've had a bunch of really cool on our, our first tour. Uh, we played a show in uh, Oklahoma City. It was Oklahoma City, right? Yeah. At the, yeah. the yeah. Matt Hoff. Hoffman Skate Park. Um, our homie Shorty put that on for us. And uh, we got to play right in front of the bathrooms at, at Matt Hoffman Skate Park. And it brought a bunch of kids out that you like wouldn't expect, you know, like there were some Juggalo kids in the back and, and some goth kids and, you know, some Hurley sweater wearing ass kids. And <laughs> fuck it. they were probably there for the skateboarding. But they stopped to watch us. And that is sentimental to me. And uh, <laughs> they stopped for the free um, and it was just a really good show. Everybody vibed together really well. And uh, that was also one of my favorite shows. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, I live in Oklahoma City, and I would love to see you guys come through here again so that I could catch a show. We would love to. We loved it there. Yeah. That's a cool place. People don't talk about that enough, and maybe we shouldn't, because then you'll have, like, a huge influx of people moving. But that was really cool. I, I like that place a lot, man. It, it shocked me. <laughs> There is a huge influx of people moving here right now, actually. <laughs> it is. Yeah. There. I like it. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Was it's, a really cool show in Denver with our homies in Ceasefire. Oh, um, cool. 
Yeah, yeah, those dudes fucking shred. If you haven't heard Ceasefire, type that shit in, put that shit on. It'll fuck your day up in a really good way. Awesome. <laughs> okay, uh, we got some more audience questions here. Um, this one comes from Ian's Dead. He says, Corey, where are you from? Like you don't know. <laughs> yeah, like you don't Like know. you don't fucking know, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm from uh, Hemet, California. Born and raised. Hemet? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. I lived in Southern California for 18 years, so. Did you have a meth addiction, too? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, thank God I didn't develop that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're both from there. It was fun. I don't remember a lot of it. It was fun. Were you born in Hemet? Yeah. Fuck no. Uh, That's you. came from there, then. I just got moved there. Before I was old enough to complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, Southern California as a whole is just like, there's no other place on earth like it. It is so unique. Um, but where you guys are at now in the Pacific Northwest, that's like one of my favorite parts of the country, man. It's just fucking gorgeous there. It's so beautiful here. Um, okay, I saw a question fly by in the comments section. Uh, which is, you know, I tell everybody not to do it, but since I saw it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask. It comes from Destructive Productions. It says, did you guys have other projects or bands on the side at the moment or past? So side projects? Um, No, we don't at the moment. And the only time that, in this band at least, that there was kind of anything going on was at the end of the band Born Sick that me and Brian were in. Um you know, we were doing that and kind of putting this together, but they kind of like there was a scene, you know, one just kind of ended and this took off. So it was, there was never a period of time where both bands were gigging or both bands were recording. Um, it just kind of one, one left and one walked in, you know? Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, one more question comes from our friends in dead 77. Although we've talked about this a little bit already. Um, are y'all excited for Rebellion? Oh, yeah. Extremely excited for Rebellion. Extremely excited to watch you guys play over there as well. And, uh, and to get to hang out with y'all. We've been listening to you guys' stuff. It's fucking killer. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure I've been as excited as this my entire life. So, not to show my hand about my excitement level, yeah. but, yeah, I'm over the moon. <laughs> Yeah, Dead 77's got a, a record out on Dismantled, a new record, and it's really fucking good. So if anybody out there uh, watching hasn't heard it yet, you should uh, look it up. It's a good jam. It's real fucking good. Yeah, I know. We cool. played with those guys uh, for our comeback show uh, a couple months back, and um, fucking cool to share the stage with them, and they're all good dudes, man. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it. I. We talk on the internet every once in a while. I haven't got the pleasure of meeting any of them in person yet, but I'm, I'm stoked for that experience and can't wait for that to happen when I hang out. Hell yeah. Um, okay, one more audience question, and it's actually for me, so I will keep it brief. Uh, this question comes from Salomon7564. He says, when is the Havoc playing again? 40 Fest, January 2023. Uh, the Havoc will be playing there. It's also our record release show for our new record entitled Our Rebellion Continues. Um, if you uh, want tickets for 40 Fest, you need to look that up uh, at 40 Ounce Booking here on Instagram. Uh, and that's all that we have to announce as of right now. Um, let's see. What is this? Okay. No, I'm not going <laughs> to ask a fucking stupid question. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> Brandon, your question got called stupid. And that's so <laughs> Uh It looks like it was, you know, thought out, but it's still a stupid question. Yes, it's an inside joke. Uh, Brandon's a good friend of mine, and we went on a trip. And, uh... We both farted up the room pretty good, so <laughs> we both woke up with a 
the fucking paint peeling off the walls. So, <laughs> and I would imagine that baked beans do make good lube and probably deliver. Um, right, I'm ready to take our friendship to the next level. Are you? <laughs> you know, uh, speaking from personal experience, being in a band, like I, I just, I really believe that you're not the best of friends with someone until you're one in a band with them or you've seen them naked. And if you're in a band with them, you've most likely seen them naked. Well, surprisingly, I don't think any of us have seen each other naked. You guys all might see me naked. I'm the, I, when I was loaded, I was a naked guy at the party. So everybody's seen me naked. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to change that when we're done. All right. I'm kind of surprised since you guys have been on tour together that you haven't seen each other naked. It's because when I'm on tour, I wear the same pants the entire time. <laughs> yeah, they stand up on their own. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I being on tour with my guys multiple times, y dude, it's just getting kind of unavoidable. And, and sometimes it's just like, you know, how can we make this, like, most ridiculous situation hilarious and someone just gets naked yeah and then you look <laughs> and say nice dick bro yeah, yeah. i've uh i've, I've walked like into a hotel room before that we were stay staying at with justin jumping up and down on the bed butt naked <laughs> <laughs> sick <laughs> yeah it made for a great laugh that's for sure yeah that's awesome <laughs> um before we wrap this shit up, do you guys have any uh, shout outs that you want to give? Yeah, I wrote down some stuff and uh, I'm probably going to add some stuff. But uh, once again, we want to shout out our homies and badass. Uh, check out, uh, check them out, you know, uh, check out their social media, listen to their music. They're fucking awesome people and they play really good punk rock. Um, our homies uh, from, from the IE, the hated, uh, we want to shout out Ceasefire from Denver. Check them out. Um, we want to shout out the Hema Police Department for years and years of great times together. Uh, Wiener Schnitzel, always bringing that chili dog and chili fry game. Uh, we would like to shout out uh, Kurt at Dismantled Records. Uh, this is a this is a VIP shout out. That motherfucker is putting in work. That motherfucker gives a shit about punk rock. Seriously, if yeah. I've ever a motherfucker that does, it's Kurt. Um, go to his web store, buy the shit that he's releasing. He relies on that to release more. So looking at Instagram posts is not going to get more stuff released, but you know, patronizing his, uh, his web store will. And uh, we want to see more great releases from Dismantle Records. Our record is actually due to be released. Uh, Let There Be Crime is actually due to be released on Dismantle Records here pretty soon. Uh, we're waiting for test pressings on that. And uh, we wanted to shout out him and thank him, you know, for putting that record out for us and uh, helped us a lot. Um, who else we want to shout out? Um, oh, too, yeah, we're because we're gonna release this uh, this music video as soon as we're done with this, and so I would like to tell uh, Chris from uh, Zomi Media, thank you. That's who filmed it. Um, he does a lot of shit with us. We do a lot of work. He plays in a band called Old Cross. Really cool dude, and uh, really good at what he does. So yeah, if you I like our video, go check out his shit. And what he does up here, he's up here in Portland and uh, does a great job. I also want to shout out uh, Mike from Crash Fest. I want to shout out the Rebellion crew for uh, for having us over there this year. Um, I also want to shout out all of our homies in Portland, uh, all of our homies at the Plaid Pig up in Tacoma, uh, Sidewalk Slam, um, Born Below, bands like that. Um, yeah. All of these people are doing really fucking cool things. Awesome list, man. Um, I have a quick question. And we want to thank you. Oh, you want to yeah, you're welcome, man. Yeah. And doing what you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. stoked to have you guys on, man. Um, you, you mentioned Wiener Schnitzel. Do, you, do they have that up there in Washington? I don't remember. Yeah, okay. I'll make it short. When I moved up here to get clean, I worked at the only Wiener Schnitzel in Vancouver. I gained a few pounds, but <laughs> I ended of it. And then they turned it into a fucking Taco Bell. Oh, so, God damn it. Yeah, they don't have one up here anymore. Uh, yeah, so no, unfortunately. That is actually one thing that I do miss about uh, Southern California, because we don't have them here in Oklahoma either. Um, and for anybody that 
isn't aware, Wiener Schnitzel actually their hot dogs are made from chicken. Oh. And uh, which was awesome uh, for my wife because she can't have beef. Oh, okay. So yeah. that that was like if we were gonna go get hot dogs, like that was the fucking place, and now we can't do that shit. <laughs> Really came unlocked. I know how it's made though, so. But they still got it unlocked. Yeah. There's I. Really, it's weird. Um, I also want to mention too. You uh, you shouted out Kurt from Dismantled, uh, and everything you said is absolutely true. I love that dude. He is fucking working so hard um, for the scene and everything that he's doing uh, for releases. And uh, I. I want to make sure that people know that um, since I decided to launch Rebellion Noise Records, uh, I don't want there to be any kind of misconception whatsoever that I'm I'm trying to have competition with anybody else that's putting out records, especially Kurt. Um, and my approach is not the same as, as what he's doing. I love that Kurt is releasing full-length records from these bands, and that's not my plan at all. Um, I, I actually really just want to use it as, as a means to connect bands through compilations and split releases, not full length records, uh, because I would rather people go to Kurt to get full length releases because he's putting in so much work to make that a possibility for bands. And I think it's fucking rad. So yeah, there's, there's no means uh, here for competition with Kurt. I, everybody should be supporting him. Absolutely. 125,000%. Um, having said that, uh, we have a guest to announce for next week's episode of Punk Rock Talk. Do you guys want to take the reins on that? Uh, yeah, I think you think we can do that. Yeah, man. I think a bird told me that next week's guest on Punk Rock Talk is going to be the one, the only, the illustrious, the infamous an all-around badass motherfucking band, Goners UK. That's right. And I love that. <laughs> I love that, man. Like, you, you fucking hype the shit out of that. I love it. They're a good-ass band. Yeah, man. Um, shout out to them. Uh, excited to have them come on the show next week. Um, and, uh, man, shout out to you guys. This was a lot of fun having you yeah. on here. And uh, anybody that's watching... Uh, make sure that you check out Crime Time's new record. It's called Crime Time. You can find it uh, on the streaming platforms and especially check out their new music video for Freedom Club. Uh, you can find it on YouTube and I believe the link for it is uh, on your band's bio, correct? Yes, it should yeah. be in our band's bio and we'll be sharing it. We'll be sharing it right after this. That way anyone that wants to check it out can. So, Fucking cool. Well, yeah. thanks again, guys, for being my guests today. Oh. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope to cross paths with you guys in person sometime in the near future. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Fuck yeah, man. I'm all about it. I had a blast, man. I wish, I actually wish this could go longer. I, I have enjoyed talking to you. Thanks, man. Well, you know what? That just means that we're going to have to set up another interview, you know, for a, another date so that we can do a follow-up into it I and dude i feel the same way like the the hour for this goes by so quick yeah. uh and i could easily go on and on um but you know uh some people have asked me like why isn't the show longer or you know why are you so committed to this time frame or whatever um and the answer to that is i have a family yeah and, both of them have shit to do yeah man like <laughs> as, as soon as i'm done with this uh, I post it and then I go and have dinner with my family and I do my nighttime routine with my daughter to get her put to bed. And that's fucking it, man. So I've got to stick to this time frame. That's right. That's how it rolls. Uh, but fucking great episode. Thanks so much for being my guest. And uh, again, I, I look forward to talking to you guys in the near future. Likewise. Let's do it again. Hell yeah. Awesome. To play us out. This is Crime Time by Crime Time. Thank <laughs> you.